hello students so after intrinsic semiconductor now we are going to discuss about valence bond model for extrinsic semiconductor so extrinsic semiconductors are those which are doped with some specific kind of impurity atoms actually suitable impurity atoms so as to increase its conductivity or we can say that to increase its number of charge carriers then such semiconductors are called extrinsic semiconductor in short i can say them impure or doped semiconductor the main motive for doping or making this impure semiconductor is to get a conduct semiconductor which has high conductivity because doping give us a highly conductive semiconductor that's the main reason why we doped sem semiconductors so extrinsic semiconductors are impure or they doped semiconductors now these semiconductors depending on the impurity atoms like which impurity atoms we are using to impure them or to dope them on the basis of that these are of two types n type and p type n type are those in which we add pentavalent impurity right so n types extrinsic semiconductors are those in which we add pentavalent impurity atom by pentavalent means atoms those have plus 5 valency so we will add those impurity atoms which have plus 5 valency in case of n type semiconductors n type extrinsic semiconductors and if we want p type extrinsic semiconductor then we have to add trivalent or plus 3 valency impurity atom to get such kind of extrinsic semiconductor means p type extrinsic semiconductors now we are going to discuss the valence band model for extrinsic semiconductor so first we will discuss valence bond model for n type extrinsic semiconductor for this i have this diagram here so if you take this structure of pure silicon or pure germanium that means a pure semiconductor this semiconductor is the pure or this one is the intrinsic semiconductor and i have taken the example of silicon we can also take the example of germanium so every silicon atom or germanium atom has plus 4 valence electron which get shared with the nearby four silicon atoms and form four covalent bond by just sharing their electrons their valence electrons now to obtain n type semiconductor we dope them by some pentavalent impurity and the impurity that we are using here is arsenic it can be instead of arsenic it can be phosphorus it can be antimony but it should be a pentavalent impurity that means it should have plus 5 valence electrons or the valency of that impurity atom is plus 5 only then we can use it as pentavalent impurity atom so here we have used arsenic and when we use arsenic so four electrons of that valence shell or we can say out of five valency the four valency get balanced by the nearby four silicon atom but this one electron remain that means the four electrons out of these five valence electrons of arsenic the four electrons make covalent bonds with the nearby silicon atoms while the fifth electron is loosely bound to that impurity atom it won't form any covalent bond it will be loosely bound electron to the impurity atom and a very small amount of energy is able to detach this electron so we need the point we have to note is that a very small amount of ionization energy that means eg is needed to detach this loosely bound remaining electron or the fifth electron of arsenic 
So, in that case the thermal energy at room temperature is enough to set free this electron and the dopant atom get converted into an ionized positive core as each pentavalent impurity atom starts donating one extra electron for conduction. So, that is why we also call them as donor atoms and these semiconductors have free electrons. Okay. So, what is happening here since at room temperature that structure will get some thermal energy and that thermal energy will be sufficient to detach this electron from this arsenic atom. Since this electron get detached from it because of that the arsenic atom will convert into an ionized positive core. So, that arsenic atom is converted into ionized positive core. Since arsenic or any other impurity atom, pentavalent impurity atom, this is donating an electron, that is why we call them as donor. So, pentavalent impurity is also called as donor. Now, since we have pentavalent impurity, we have free electrons. That is why these semiconductors have free electrons contributed by donors and generated by thermal process. Now, we have two types of free electrons. Type 1 is the thermally generated by the break of silicon silicon bond just like intrinsic semiconductor these bonds will break and they will form one free electron and one hole pair in this case we will get electron hole pairs while the second case is this loosely bound electron from impurity atom so, in case of n-type semiconductor, we are getting contribution from two types of electrons. One is generating from this thermal energy that we are getting from room temperature and second we are getting from these loosely bound electrons that get detached from those impurity atoms because of the room temperature. Also, in this case, in the case 1, the number of electrons that we are getting by the breaking of silicon silicon bond we are also getting that much holes in that structure so for n type semiconductors electrons are obtained from both one and two process while holes are obtained from this process only so for n type semiconductor the number density the number density for electrons n e should be greater greater than n h right that means the number density for free electrons is more much more than the number density for holes in the case of n type extrinsic semiconductor since the number of electrons is much more than the number of holes that is why we call electrons as majority charge carriers. So, majority charge carriers in case of n type semiconductor is free electrons while minority charge carriers are holes because their number is less but they are carrying some charge. So, they are minority charge carriers while free electrons are majority charge carriers. Since in n type material the impurity atom that we have is ready to donate this electron and become a positive ion core. Then in the structure we can also represent it by a positive ion core having an electron with it. So, this will show the donor impurity right this is structure will show the donor impurity which is ready to donate its electron and become a positive ion core. So, this is called donor core and this is electron and this whole is called the donor impurity atom. So, this is the structure for valence bond model of n type extrinsic semiconductor. Now, we are moving to the valence bond model for p type extrinsic semiconductor. In case of p type extrinsic semiconductor, the difference is 
the impurity that we are using should be trivalent so we have to dope this structure with some trivalent impurity for example aluminium so here we have used aluminium doped in silicon structure initially in the structure when there was no doping every silicon electron get bonded with every nearby silicon electron like this so every silicon atom is making four covalent bonds by sharing their electron with the nearby silicon atoms but when we dope it with trivalent impurity that is aluminium then aluminium has three valence electrons only so out of the four silicons four nearby silicons three make covalent bonds by sharing while this bond will remain incomplete there is no electron to make this covalent bond because of this vacant space right there exists a vacant space this electron from any of the nearby silicon slide into this space to form the bond and leave a vacancy at its place so the electron from the neighboring silicon silicon covalent bond slide into this vacant bond and create a vacancy or hole this is the vacancy or hole in that bond now we have hole available for conduction right because hole can participate in conduction that's why we get hole for conduction so the trivalent impurity atom this trivalent impurity atom since except an electron it becomes negatively charged when all its valence bond get filled initially this was vacant so to fulfill this one of the electron from the nearby silicon silicon bond slide into this position so these bonds get completed but since this this aluminum or this impurity atom accepts that negatively charged electron that's why it become negative and since it is accepting an electron that why we call this trivalent impurity as acceptor impurity just as in case of pentavalent impurity since it was donating an electron we call them donor the trivalent impurity is accepting an electron that's why we call them as acceptor impurity and when it accepts an electron from the nearby silicon silicon bond a vacant space or a vacancy create there which is equivalent to hole and since we get hole so now hole is available for conduction in n type semiconductor the impurity atom was creating free electrons that's why the number density of free electrons become more than that of holes in case of n type extrinsic semiconductor but in this case in p type semiconductor this impurity atom or by the addition of impurity atom we are getting holes so in the case of p type semiconductor number of holes is much much more than number of electrons because electrons we are getting from the breaking of silicon silicon bond only because of the thermal energy right means when this bond break we get electrons as well as we get holes and holes we are also getting from the impurity atom that is aluminum atom in this case we also getting holes so number of holes is more than that of the electrons right so in case of p type semiconductor number density for holes is much much more than number density for electrons and that's why the majority charge carriers in case of p type semiconductor are holes while minority charge carriers in case of p type semiconductor are free electrons since the impurity atom here is trivalent and it is accepting an electron that's why we can denote it by a negatively charged acceptor core along with a hole so this is how we are representing acceptor impurity in which this is acceptor core and this is hole right so that's how we can explain the valence bond model for p type extrinsic semiconductor that's all for the video for further videos stay tuned and keep studying thank you